coffee up here. I brought mine. Woo, I feel short back here for some reason. Feels like Matt. Hey, I just wanted to say that it seems like the, the during as we go through the Vision Week messages that the people up on stage keep getting better looking. So I guess next week you're going to have the elders' wives up here? Yes. Yes. That's correct. That would be a good thing. Well, well, I'm glad you're here. And I uh, just want to say before we get into this, uh, probably going to need to, uh, I don't know. I know it's always worse up here. Probably going to need to make sure the heat's off. If not, I may lose one of these guys up here because it's warm. And, and uh, I just wanted to say to the worship team, I mean, I know that you guys know how much the, the church pr- appreciates you, but sometimes I want to stand in the front and lose everyone. And sometimes I just get caught up in the, in the worship personally. And then sometimes I can't pry myself away from the back of the room. Because sometimes it's, uh, it, it enhances my worship just to watch the, the level of worship that is happening in the room. And I just want to say it is, it is good. There is such a, such a tremendous level of worship that happens in this place. And, and you know, I think the, our worship team does a tremendous job at leading us there. But what's key and what happens is you do a dynamic job of when we get there of you pressing in yourself and you saying, I, this is for me. And it is just an awesome thing to be able to have a church like this to worship with and, and to see what's going on and, and to embrace these times. I do want to tell you that as over the last couple of weeks, as things have been different and things will be, you know, obviously things are going to be a little bit different today. As they have been different, I want to tell you Stay, stay, let your level of anticipation be high. I, pro, I will promise you this. You are, on the, you are on the beginnings of seeing one of, the, one of the most incredible transformations that you've ever seen. The Lord is beginning, has already begun, and is going to just continue. And even, even more so, it will multiply what He is doing. And you are going to see... Incredible things. You need to be able to take snapshots in your minds of pictures of what's going on, because the Lord just has uh, the Lord just has big plans for us together as a body. And and as we get to see these things, um, you know, it's just an exciting thing. It's an exciting thing to see Him moving in this place so much, not just in this place, but in our community, and just seeing the things that's going on. Do not fail to recognize the hand and the move of God. I wanted to do this because I wanted you guys to get to see this and experience this too. But I want all of you to. If you were here um, a year ago in October when we, did, when we did the whole flood series, if you were here today, and I know that there's a lot of people that were here then um, that still go here but that aren't here today. If you were here today today, the night that we met up here at the church, the cold night that we met up here at the church and we walked down Main Street and laid our hands on those buildings and prophesied life into the dead places. If you were here today and you did that, would you raise your hand up? I want, you, I want all of you to see and I want you to remember. I want you to drive down Main Street today when church is over. Just look around at the people that are here. I want you to drive down Main Street today and look at it. And then think about what happened that day. I promise you, the things that are going on are not because of us, but because we have availed ourselves to be the conduit for the kingdom to move. And I want you to drive down that street today and recognize the differences and see what's happening. God has got a great plan for this community. And, and here's the thing that, that, that so excites me. As I see the plan for the community starting to unfold, and I see things happening here in our, in our building, but outside, as I see that start happening, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like you could get so excited about that and just focus on that, but God's already moved. God's already moved the vision on and, on and beyond, you know. I am, I, 
I am so thankful to see the life moving down our main street. But then, but now I feel the, the stirring to, to see it completed here or to see it moving here even more so. But moving into, moving into White Deer and moving into Claude and moving through the streets of Highland Park and just moving through the areas around us, Skelly Town, to see God moving in those places is going to be a powerful thing. And, and you are in on the beginnings of, of seeing something different than, than you'll experience um, just in a typical church setting because we resolve not to be a typical church. We just don't want that. And so I want to just stop for a second and say, if we don't take pictures to recognize, then we'll miss out on things. And, and another uh, opportunity to recognize is just seeing Mike Terrell here today. I got a chance to, I mean, this guy... It is an awesome thing. And I know he, he can't understand the level of calls and messages I've got from you guys about him and wanting to know how he's doing. But I'm telling you, this guy went through this surgery several months ago. And, and I promise you, days later, he wasn't sitting here feeling like he's feeling today. He was in, was it two, three days after your surgery? Three or four days after your surgery that you were sitting in, he was sitting in my office. And I'm like, man, what are you doing? I was like, Pfft bored, man, trying to find something to do. I'm talking about guy had just been cut from bottom of his chin to the top of his kneecap, laid open, and three days, you know, later, he's walking around and feeling great, and he said to me that day, to tie all of this back in together, he said to me that day, you know, we prayed and prayed and prayed for my healing and didn't understand why it didn't happen beforehand, but he said, I promise you, it's happened. Man, I'm, I'm so healed. And the Lord allowed me to go through surgery, whatever the reason. But I'm telling you, I'm healed. I shouldn't feel as good as I feel. And, and it's recognizing that and pointing that out and laying that out there that, that stirs this faith up even more. Because God obviously has got a great destiny for, for the Tarot family and a great plan. And, and so it's, it's seeing what he's doing. It's recognizing it, pointing it out. And that's why we're doing this. we got to recognize what's going on point it out, and just see God continue to move. So if you're here today and you're visiting, this is not the typical service. Um, don't come expecting a typical service because we try to not have those ever. We, will, we don't ever want to have typical services. But this is just, uh, this is what's happening. This is the difference. Um, we will wrap up our series this, this Sunday on vision. And what we've been doing the last three weeks uh, ending today is is just laying out what the vision of the future looks like and how could we do that without finishing it out without the elders. Not only do I want to give these guys a chance to, to share their hearts with you and what they see and what's happening, but I want you to get a feel for who they are. I want you to get to know them. You need to be very familiar with these guys and, and develop a level of comfort with them because they want to be here for you. They want to, they know what's going on. Uh, in, in the church as a whole, I mean, the way that we make decisions now and the way that we, we go forward is the five of us sit down nearly weekly. We, we go over the finances. We um, obviously are, are staying prayed up and asking God to show us what the plan in the future is. And so these guys, they have their finger on, on the pulse. They know. And so if you have an issue, if there's something that you want to celebrate, remember, the Scriptures command you. To not just bring, not just, if you got stuff you're troubling with, these are, we're, we're who you're supposed to bring it to. Bring it to us. But they also tell you even more so, sharing the good stuff. So if you got some stuff you want to share with, with them, some things you want us to be praying about, I mean, we need to be praying together. We need to be seeking the Lord for, for Stephen Key's dad. You know, seeking God. He's laying in the hospital right now. Um, waiting to have some bypass surgery, and, and it's going to be good. God's got a good plan. Um, Dina, God, Dina's son is, is in Dallas. He's not in the hospital anymore. He had an accident, lost, lost the feeling in his legs, and is, is able to walk right now. Feeling came back in one of his legs. It's not there in the other leg, and he's walking around on a cane. And that's not God's plan. And so we're, Dina, we're going after the Lord as a body today. You need to know that this just isn't a group of people for you to sit in a room with, but that this is a family that's going to go after the Lord and just say, Father, touch his legs. Bring the healing, complete rest, uh, restoration to his body. And so 
that's what we want to go after. We want to we want to do those things. We want to we want to celebrate birthdays like little Arch today. It's little it's baby Arch's birthday today. We want to sell we want to celebrate life together. You know, and that's what we want to do. And so, so I want to pray for us. Then I'm going to shut up and let these guys talk. Uh, before I pray, let me say this. We were supposed to have a marriage retreat in a couple of weeks. Um, we have too many money things going on. I, I, you know, there's just so much going on with FPU, uh, Financial Peace University. We have a video that we'll show next week about that. Um, I, I know it's hard. It's hard to get excited for something like that. It's hard in my flesh, but my spirit knows what's coming. It's going I promise you, FPU is going to be the springboard that's going to send us as a church into some, some dynamic things. And, and don't miss out on that. Don't do it. And so that's coming up. And then, you know, the concealed thing. And so what we did was we moved the marriage retreat. So now, I, and I, I'm getting tired of moving it too. I apologize. But it, we did. So now it's tentatively on the schedule for April the 25th and 26th. Because we don't want to miss out on these things that are going on. Uh, we also make sure you make note of this. February the 9th, Wayne McGorick is uh, our missionary to Nicaragua. He will be here and he'll be bringing the word February the 9th. So do not miss out on that. He's going to, uh, you will fall in love with him too. Wayne and Elaine will be here and they'll be sharing what's going on with, in Nicaragua. And we also have some dates for Nicaragua. So make sure you pencil these down. We'll, we'll keep these in front of you. But Nicaragua is going to go down June the 9th through the 16th. That's a Monday to a Monday. The Mondays will be our travel days. Uh, we talked about shorting, making it a little bit shorter, but no one wants to do that. We, you will. Those days go by too fast while we're there. So June the 9th through the 16th is when we're going to go to Nicaragua. Just start making plans for that. We've got a lot of, of fundraising to do for that. And so the... February the 9th when Wayne is here speaking, we're going to do pancakes and sausage again that day. And we'll do them, uh, I don't know if we're going to do them before and after, but we're definitely going to do them after church so people can stay and just have some pancakes, sausage for lunch afterwards. And we'll do that as a fundraiser for Nicaragua. Okay, let's pray together. So Father, just stir our hearts up. Help us to be able to, regardless of what's going on in the service, help us to always hear what your heart's saying. God, let, let these things happen uh, the right way so that we can communicate what, uh, what you want to do, Father. And I know that, that your plans and your visions uh, for our future are going, to, are, are, are going to be an amazing thing as we start wrapping our minds around what you really want to do. And so, Father, we just say we want to avail ourselves to you. The scriptures say in the last days that our young men would dream dreams, that our old men would see visions. And so we, we open ourselves up. Bring your word to us. Father, let, let, let the sons and the daughters of this house hear what you're saying and move us on into your future, your destiny. And we know part of that is experiencing the healing that you have for us. By your stripes, the word says, we were healed. And so we pray for that healing to manifest on Stephen's body today. We pray for that healing to manifest today on Dina's son. God, we just look for you to bring your healing touch on all the sicknesses that are going on. Just bring these things about. We want to accomplish your will. And so bless the service. Fill it up, Holy Spirit. We need you, God. Let it be a great day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now then, letting these guys go, I don't know who's going to start us out, but I just am turning these guys loose. We want to just, we're just going to kind of share with you we are, we are going to start putting on the calendar one of our elder meetings a month that we keep in front of you guys. You're, any of you are welcome to come to any of our elder meetings to just sit in and hear what's going on. Or to if you've got some questions, some thoughts, you can bring them to those. But know that you can meet with, individually with any one of us anytime. If you, need a, if you want a chance to meet, sit down with any one of us, um, you just call up here to the church. You schedule it with Rachel. If you want to you want, you want to sit down and talk to Mike Brambeck, you call up here and talk to Rachel, and she will schedule that and get it set up. So whoever wants to jump in, we'll just start letting, we'll just kind of take off and see where it, where it ends up. Uh-oh. should be on. Let's see here. No? <laughs> uh, yeah, where we go. We're on. 
You got us? Hello? Hello? Yep. Can you hear me? Since I'm the old one, I'll go first. I'm going to... Um, Are we on? It is? Okay. Yeah. I'm... Uh, for those of you who don't, don't know me or haven't seen the, uh, the elder uh, introduction, my name is Spencer McElhenn, and I'm, I'm the old guy of the bunch, <laughs> the one who also doesn't have any hair. So, um, <laughs> I want I want to for a minute uh, uh, speak uh, speak no, on behalf of all the guys. I'm going to step out here on a limb and and tell you that you're looking at five very ordinary men called to a, an extraordinary purpose, um, guiding this church and uh, shepherding this church and being the stewards of this church is a, a big responsibility, but um, we, uh, every, t- every time we meet as well as I know each one of us here um, see- seeks out God's uh, goodwill and purpose for, for this church and, and uh we're constantly asking him to give us uh, clarity on that so that we can guide this in, in, a, in a good and proper way. Um, I just want to tell you all that, that it is a, um, a great uh, pleasure and also a privilege to serve with these men. I, ha- I have known um, all of them for, uh, for quite a while. Uh, Mark, obviously, as long as he's been here. Um, Katya Patrick and I came to the church uh, eight years ago when we moved to Panhandle. And uh, I can tell you when I stepped into here eight years ago, I never expected that I would be sitting up here as an elder of this uh, body. Um, I want to challenge you each to, to uh, consider something, that uh, today as you sit there in that seat that you're not here by accident, that uh, God has brought you here with a very specific purpose Mark's laid out a bold, bold vision that God's given him for this body and for, for this community. And each one of you has a role to play in that. Um, I know that uh, for some of you, you're sitting there going, ooh, that makes me uncomfortable. You know, I'm not sure that uh, there's necessarily a spot for me. But I can tell you, if uh, I had been sitting in that seat and someone had said this eight years ago, I would have said the very same thing. And I sit up here as an elder of this body. Um, I can tell you that in my own experience, God will bring you through that if you will search him out, if you will go to him and ask him specifically what it is he has for you. Um, He will equip you for that. He will uh, inform you of that. Uh, One of the things that we're here to do as elders is to help you with that. So as you begin to pray and ask God for guidance in that, come see us. Let us pray with you. Let us be a part of that. Let us uh, pray with you and, and, and search God's goodwill out for that. Um, as you do that, I promise you, no matter how busy you are, no matter how much difficulty there is in your life, God's going to bless you greatly. I can tell you that that's been happening in my life and continues to happen. Um, I love all of you. I want to get to know those of you who I don't know. Please stop me. Introduce yourself. I mean, the church is growing. Mark made that clear by, by the show of hands. I mean, there's so many of you that I don't know. Um, I'm terrible at names. Forgive me if I have to ask you again, but uh, uh, please let me be a part of your life. Um, that's what I'm here to do, and that's what I want to do. And I just, to, to bring to that, don't miss what he said. I have talked to so many of you after that were here a couple of weeks ago whenever I, I preached the first message when I actually was, was preaching, and we talked about vision I've talked to so many of you that have said, I've never sat down and thought about vision for my family. We haven't haven't ever really sat down and thought about that. If you haven't done that, first of all, don't don't feel bad about that. Because the last however many years are behind you, really at this point, are irrelevant. What's important and what's relevant is what does today and what is ahead of you? What's the plan? What's the future? Because if you don't have a plan then don't expect to accomplish anything. You just can't, we just cannot, we cannot find scripturally where we're called to just live by whatever the world hands us. We're just not, that's not the deal. And so we have to plan for it. And so what he's saying is, if you've never really engaged in that, it might be a a weird place for you. You might not have even know how to have that conversation with your family. If that's something that we can sit down and, and you can come to us and go, Man, 
I haven't really thought about having a plan for my family. I need you to pray for me for that. Get, I need some wisdom. I need, some, I need to know how to do that. Then as you plan for your families and we plan for the church, that's what's going to make it work. And so I just want to challenge, keep that challenge before you. Don't go into 2014 just, just uh, letting whatever happened to you happen. That's just, that just can't be the plan. So develop that plan. Anybody, anybody want to jump in here? I'll jump in. All right. Um, I'm Mike Amos, by the way, if you don't know who I am. Uh, just to add to what Spencer's saying, man, there's so many opportunities that we've got in this church for you to help. And, you know, Mark talks about going hard after God. Well, going hard after God is more than just coming on Sundays. And, and please understand, I'm, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, condemn anybody. But, man, we need help. And if that's washing dishes, hey, you can do that for the Lord, and that's service. And, and there are plenty of opportunities. Um, you know, we have a meeting after church for the greeters, if you're interested in being a greeter. There's a meeting after church for, uh, to help with the youth. And if you're not up here on Wednesday night just to see what's going on with, with, with the youth and the, and the elementary school kids, it's amazing. There are so many kids here. And so we, we need your help. And we need you to get involved. And I guarantee you that God will bless that. Um, also, uh, small groups start back up tonight. If you're not in a small group, man, come find one of us. Because it, it, it's just an opportunity to live life with a smaller group of people and really be able to share, share your heartaches, uh, share your joys, and, and live life with people on a, on a more intimate scale. And if you're not in a small group, I guarantee you you're missing out. So I would just throw that in there. If, if, you, if, you've got, if you want to get involved, if, you've got, if God's given you a word as far as, hey, we're not doing this, and I think this would help us reach those thousand lost people, man, come talk to one of us. Come schedule a time with Rachel to, to meet with one of us, and, and let us, you know, let us get, your, let's get, it, let's get your passion, and let's figure out how we can use that to go after God and get those lost people in here. Uh, and I would just want to, for those of you who are visiting and maybe are not even familiar with small group, life group, home group, uh, those terminologies is we meet on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evenings in our homes. We have child care available here at the church. It's from 630 to 8. Um, Brandy and I, are lead, uh, we lead a group. The Amos is lead a group. I guess everybody up here leads a group. Um, and then there's some other people here that lead groups. So if you're not even familiar with that and you want to know about that, come just catch one of us after service real quick. And it's nothing spooky. It's just uh, just meeting in our living rooms and, and talking about, you know, Brandy and I, we try to lead a, a marriage and family group. Just And that doesn't mean you're going to come there and just get, you know, or annihilated about your marriage or anything like that. We just meet in our living room and we talk about our families. We talk about our kids. We, you know, we talk about church and we pray with each other if you have and, and that's what goes on in our, in the small groups or home groups. Um, but also, I'd I'd like to add too that as far as as far as going after God and asking about serving or or what your calling is, I like that that Dub is going to be available and he's going to go after that this year. That's part of his vision for 2014. And I I just want to add to that if you're if you're seeking God and what what your calling is don't get discouraged when you don't get it overnight. Um, I would say that for us, uh, Brandy and I as a as a couple and as a family, man, it was a it was frustrating for me. I know on a <clears throat> just like I was going to get hit with a bolt of lightning and God was going to tell me what I was going to do at this church, and it didn't happen like that. Um, <clears throat> it, not, it didn't only take months, it took years to get some confirmation in what, what our role was here uh, in the church as a whole. Um, obviously, we haven't been at this church for, for five years yet, but, you know, God put us here for a reason. And, and once we got here, God began to speak much clearer to us about our role here, um, the transformation that's happened to this church over the last couple of years. And, and as we... As we accepted that and, and fell into that, it, it becomes much easier and much clearer, and you, you know where you, where you need to be. You know where you don't need to be, even more importantly. And, um, you know, we, we have a lot of places to serve here. Um, 
and it, it may be as simple as, like I say, washing dishes. It may be come and help uh, with a with a nursery or something. But but ask for God's gui- uh, guidance in that, and <clears throat> not to be a not to be a, a a money pounder or anything. But I'll just be real honest with you and blunt with you. And some people are going to get some real serious awakening if you come. I think in February to our financial peace. Um, man, there's a there's a place here for your money, and and I don't want to be up here just like with my hand out saying "Give me, give me, give me." But you know, God, it's God's money. God's going to tell you what to do with it. And when God speaks to you about what you're supposed to do with your finances, and if that's pour into the Nicaragua missions, you know, you may not go to Nicaragua or any other um, mission thing that we have going on, or, or you may not work in. Uh, youth and you may not go on camps or things like that but if if God tells you and speaks to you about your finances and pouring into that I say listen to him because you're going to be blessed beyond means and and just you know to go along with that let me just say to you part of that one of the things that that stays in front of us is come up and see what happens on a Wednesday night what happens on a Wednesday night up here we'll have you know we'll have a hundred teenagers and we'll have a hundred little kids up here well one of the things that goes on can we maintain that and facilitate that yeah we've got it, we've got it there but one of the things that that we have in front of us that I'm that I'm leading the charge in is I want us to hire another I want us to hire a children's pastor because we can maintain what we have or we can seek God and ask him to to stir up our faith enough to bring in another person somebody that can bring in more vision for that and the, and the point is, it, it matters. We not only do we want to provide something great for the kids that we have, but we want to start figuring out a way to reach more of the kids that we don't have. We, want, we don't want to be content that there's 100 kids here. We want there to be 200 kids here because that's another 100 chances to impact another 100 families. And it's just, it's, it's, and it's big, and that's why. There's always going to be, whether it's a, another coffee pot. Can I tell you something? Y'all are the coffeeest drinking suckers. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. But listen to me. People want to know all the time, why, why is it? What's it a big deal? What's the finances? Listen to me. We spend close to $1,000 a month on our coffee and coffee supplies. Man, we, that's good. That's good. That's not a bad thing. Don't stop drinking it because I'll drink your share. <laughs> but it just, it takes that. And, and so we, we buy more coffee pots. You know, we got three coffee, big coffee pots back there today. And guess what? They're all three empty right now. That's a good thing because the room's full of people. And, and we're, I can't wait. I promise you, we're a couple of months away from, from Dove's nightmare. We're going to have to have two services. It's coming. You know why? Because look around. The room's pretty full at this point. Statistically, we know, just we know because we study and read this stuff, when the room is 75% full, when people come in the back door, they feel, new people, they feel unwelcome. And the chances are they don't want to come back. We're not okay with that. And that's why I tell you as members, the, the longer you're here, the more scoot over, man, start cramping in. You know, that's why we're doing the family thing. Get close because we want to keep these seats by the doors open. We want people to be able to come in and feel welcome because it's kingdom stuff. And it, it just requires that. You know, it's just, it's just part of it. I've, and I forgot too. Thanks, bro, for the word. <laughs> that was awesome. Hit me. It is good. Yeah, man. It's, it, it, it is uh, because I did want, I wanted to add to it too. You are. What if, what if we just get that? What if we miss everything else today and we just get that? You're prepared. You are available. You are keyed up. You are ready, primed today. Listen, I don't care where you came in to, to today from. I don't care what happened last night. I don't care what happened yesterday. You are in the exact Spot, you are primed and ready for the for the King of Kings to use you. Right now, just you're in tune, man. You're ready. It's not it's not a forced thing. You don't have to study enough. You don't have to pray enough. He's, you're ready to be used. You are the only thing that you're waiting on. I promise you, you're not waiting on God. You're not waiting on anything else. It's just you. So, no, I'll just uh, I'll go ahead and wrap up now. Let on. I'll let Jeremy. <laughs> 
Hey, by the way, sitting on the elder board doesn't make me old. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> but he's on his way. But we have to remind him of that a lot. I don't. I wear hearing aids. Does that help me qualify? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and no, my, in my specific, my prayer about this church and, and started praying really back in November about 2014. And, and uh, God spoke real clearly uh, to me. I wanted, and I asked him for something very specific, just single word. If I could wrap up into one word, what, you know, what, where can I go? How can I approach people about um, the church? How can I approach them in, in group? And how can I make somebody else's life better in 2014? And, I, and God spoke very, very clearly to me about that. And the word that he gave me was selfishness and, and, and I can wrap that up into every single aspect of my life and every and and probably everybody here at some point in time um it it affects uh it primarily affects uh on our level affects our marriage um and which is just a big big uh, like a domino effect of things uh being tied up in myself or or you and yourself or however that may affect you um it's being selfish. Um, and taking, it takes time away from God, it, and it takes, you know, can take time away from our family, takes time away from our marriage, and and it's just a big domino effect of just getting wrapped up in yourself. And so I just say that for me going in 2014 is, I'm going to, for myself, I'm praying for some help in some areas that I'm still suffering with selfishness, if you will, and for everybody in the church too, because if you get away from yourself and you start pouring into first, uh, first and foremost, your relationship with God, that will, especially for men, and I, I'm a little old fashioned, forgive me, I hope I don't step on any toes, but for men to be the leader of their home and to lead their wife and to lead their, uh, lead their children and what they're supposed to be doing, um, you just can't be wrapped up in yourself. And if it's all about you, then you are essentially you're affecting your primarily your relationship with God, and from there everything around you. So, my my word for you, my encouragement for you is just go after God. And if that's if that's you, just go after God and pray about it, and just and listen to where He directs you away from yourself. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. My name is Jeremy Jones, and even though I'm not the oldest elder on the board, I have here been to this, at this church for the longest period of time. And in case you haven't figured out yet, I'm the more reserved and less talking elder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this this is about how it goes in the board meet or the elders meetings too. So, <laughs> no, actually, I'm the secretary, so I have to sit there and take notes anyway. But. Uh, since I've been here the longest, um, I can honestly say, along with Spencer, that I've seen this church transform greatly. I mean, as I look across, I see lots of faces that, you know, of course I know around town, but hadn't been a part of this church before. And it's great. I mean, that's, that's our, our whole mission here is to, to reach the new people. And, and uh, as I was praying and trying to figure out the words to say about the vision thing, of course, we've talked about this to Mark before. It's like, what are we, what are we gonna say that you hadn't said already? Which I'd have got nothing. So. <laughs> but uh, what what I did have come to me was uh, kind of like what you were saying, Mike. As far as what, you know, what we can do, what we can be involved in, is is for some for some reason my dream last night. God spoke. God speaks to me through dreams, and and um, He put on my heart to just tell you all about about resumes, and not like a work resume or anything like that. But if we were to fill out a resume for God, you know, what would that include? And I think that ties in with our vision because along there, you know, we can put our experience and stuff and, and our qualification, you know, it could be something like, you know, well, Jesus died for me and his grace is covering me, so that's my qualification. Um, there's a lot of people out there that can't put that on there, you know, and those are the thousand people we're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, I guess, what, two weeks ago, I, I went to Trinity. I wasn't here. I went to Trinity because that was part of what we've talked about is, is some of us elders are going to go visit some of the other churches and just let them know we're we're all on the same team. We're, you know, we're all working for the same goal, and and that's part of it. You know, um, thousand plus. We don't necessarily say, hey, we want to bring a thousand people into our church. We want to bring a thousand people to Christ. Yeah. You know, whether that's yeah. And the thing is, once we do our job, 
God's going to reward us with those people. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the word that I wanted to give to these people with the mm-hmm. resume thing. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I do too. I think it is too. Um, I I think that the other thing that we want to we really want to pick up on is one of the the things that we want to communicate to you is. If you don't leave, if you don't leave this, this, this service, seeing you as part of this, then somewhere we're missing out. Somewhere we're, we're not communicating what we feel so impressed on us to communicate. Because it doesn't matter how bad, whoever it is that's standing on this stage wants to see things happen. If you aren't buying in. If you aren't seeing yourself as part of that, if you aren't seeing yourself as, as, as an effective part of that, it, it, you're how it grows. This, this church, this church will grow, and, and what God's called us to in the kingdom grows by you seeing yourself as, as well, I can't afford to have, I can't afford to be that selfish guy. I can't afford to just have any marriage. I can't afford to. And I need a place to plug into where, where I'm, my marriage is going to change, where I'm going to be around people that's going to cause change, where I'm, where I'm going to be, bump into a guy that, that hears from God through dreams. And it's, it's, I don't think, I think he's been studying his scriptures because the scriptures say your young men will dream dreams, your old men will see visions. And so I think he wanted to make sure that we all knew. <laughs> That he's part of the young, the young thing. But you've got to be a part of something like that. You need to be a part of something where, where you know God's speaking. Where there is, there is something happening and that there is change going on. You need, to, you need to know that you're a part of a place that isn't just going to be content at seeing you once a week and then, and then wishing you luck for the rest of the week. But knowing that you're living life with someone. Knowing that, that there is a plan and that there is a purpose and that there is a mission. And so as, as we start, as we bring to a close what I, I, I have been telling you going into this vision series. That I felt like that there, that there is a plan in place. And I felt like the Lord was, was sharing with me and with these guys some really specific things that need to happen. I hope that you are starting to hear some of those things. And I want you to hear some of those things from us. But I want you to be hearing those things from the Lord. I want you to know going into this year, into 2014, that you have never gone to church with so much anticipation of what God's going to do. You, it's up to you. What you do with this now is completely up to you. If you're waiting for an invite into the, uh, into the, the inner workings, then you're missing out. (laughs) Because it doesn't, the invite's on the table. You just got to jump in. There is, there is so many things. Uh, I, I am amazed. I am amazed, and I know we, we talk about them a lot, but I'm amazed by the group that, that prepares the meals every week. I'm amazed by the group that is here late every Wednesday night cleaning the kitchen and, and mopping and doing the dishes. I'm amazed every Sunday morning whenever I'm, I'm watching the group that's, that's setting up whatever's going on in there, the shirts and the coffee. And I'm amazed at the, at the stories that I hear coming out of the home groups. And I promise you, you're not going to get a more, there's nothing else that's going to happen. You just have to say, this is the year that I'm going to go all in. Because that's what he's calling for us. Even more as we see the day approaching. And I just, I, I want to end this with reminding you the, the passage that I had out to remind you for. And I, I just moved my paper because I was going to read something else. But I, I had read to you the, the, the passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 where it talks about the wise builder, how you need to build. You need to leave the, today realizing that you have been called, that your life You have been called to build your life incredibly careful. And you need to leave today with this understanding. See, I'm convinced that the things you're going to be held accountable for when you stand in front of God and listen to me. 
you will stand in front of God someday. And you will give an account for the life that you lived. The things that you're going to give an account for are the things that you've had set before you. The opportunity for understanding that you've had brought before you. You're not going to be held accountable for things that you didn't know. You're going to be held accountable for that that you do know. And what you do know is this. You're going to give an account for the life that you live. And you're going, you're going to receive re rewards. Or the scriptures say you're going to suffer loss. You'll still go to heaven. But the scriptures say only as one escaping through the flames. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And I promise you, when you stand in front of God that day, one-on-one, -on -one, these words will come back to you. The Lord's going to say, you knew that your life mattered. It's not a, it's not a condemning thing. But it's just a reality thing. The life that you live, what you do with the rest of your life when you walk out this door is going to matter. And you and God are going to talk about it. And he's going to say, that day, February the whatever today is, 19th, I mean January, we're knocking on February's door. God's going to say, that day, I, I I told Mark to put before you that what you did with February, I mean with January the 20th from then on, what you did with that, you were going to answer for. So you, you walked out knowing. So I'm just saying to you, I, I hope that it stirs an, an excitement in you to see what's going on. If you, if you were here and you, you put your hands on the buildings in Main Street, drive down Main Street today and look at it. And ask God if you had any part of that. I guarantee you're going to hear him say a resounding yes, you did. And not only has that changed, but there's more change to come. And listen, it's not just more storage buildings to come. <laughs> Let's just agree we got enough storage buildings in this town. <laughs> Let's start living life. I mean, let's go after. Let's just press in to him and say, what do you have for us? God, show us what your plan is. We're going to align our families. We're going to align our finances. We're going to align our, our selfishness. We're going to align ourselves with you, God. And, and God, we challenge you. What will you do with us? What will you do with us as individuals? What will you do with us as a body in 2014? Because we're going to give an account. It's going to matter.